so I only have one question for you. Are you ready to tackle all the variations for the Tarash in one video? I asked myself this question beforehand, and the answer is yes, and so are you. Let's go ahead and get started. Now, I like to pair the French with the Tarash because it is the same pawn structures. Pawn structure with e6, d5, and c5 being played. Now, you can play the French only against 1e4, which will typically have structures looking like that. The Tarash is played against everything that is not 1e4. So, let's start with the English and see how we can get our main positions in the Tarash. c5, very important. First three moves. Takes, takes. Knight c3, knight c6, g3. Okay? So now let's look at one knight f3. Knight e6, c5, knight c6, knight c3. And we have the Tarash again. Okay? So let's see from 1d4. Keep in mind there are some sidelines, like if they try to throw this at you. Go back into the French. Boom. Easy. You decline Black Mar D Mar's Gambit. So after d5, c4, e6. Now, important note before we get to the main line with knight c3. If they take, always be sure to take back the correct way. Knight c3, c5. Be very aware if they take. You don't want to take with the bishop. You lose a pawn for free. Keep this in your mind that any time he takes on c5, you should first consider the active move d4. It defends your knight and forces him to waste a move. After which, there are many moves that black could play, but I really like this strong move b5. After takes, takes, it develops a rook. Black is going to be the attacker in this variation. It's a small price to pay for a pawn. After b3, knight f6. He gets a lot of play. I mean, white's position's so awkward for the pawns that he has. He gets a pawn back finally. And with devastating effect, it's very difficult to see how White is going to be able to survive this type of position. Black has the two bishops in an open position with a clear plan of bishop e7, castling, doubling rooks, and pushing the a pawn for the win. So after, say, castles, bishop c5. I mean, this is easy money, man. Okay. On to our main lines. After knight c3, do not mess this up. You must play c5 on move 3. If you play knight f6, which is incorrect, this allows for us to go into the exchange variation of the queen's gambit. This is outside of our repertoire. You do, do not want to do this. After knight c3, c5. Takes, takes, knight f3, c3. And we will get to the other variations later with white moving his bishop out, or doing other things. The main line is typically going to be g3. And this comes our first branch. This is your decision that you have to make for you. Now, after knight f6, this is the main line of the Tarash. Now, there are two branches to the main line that occur right here. Bishop g5, in which case we play c4. You play very solidly. Even though the pawns are messed up, you get a serious amount of play. And I evaluate this position as interesting because white has the better structure, a knight and bishop. Black has the pair of bishops in an open position. So whoever's better at in games is going to win this. So that was 9 bishop g5. The other variation is 9 d takes c5, in which case d4. Like I told you before, if they take on c5, the first move we consider is d4. Don't just take back and play passive check. d4. Get it. I'm just saying. d4. Just one more time. d4. Now you remember it. After knight a4, 
Bishop f5. We're going to play actively. We're down a pawn, but white's pieces are awkward. Bishop e4. The point of this strong move is to look at white's strong bishop. If he ever moves the knight, snag the bishop. Rook c1. Queen d5. All of black's pieces are coming to really strong squares. After queen b3, do we want to trade queens? Okay, let's pause. In the Tarash, black has a worse pawn structure than white. This means that if you just trade down, you're going to have weaknesses in your end game with your pawns. And white will have a better game. Your only chance in the Tarash is to play actively and aggressively. That means don't trade pieces. Only trade if you're winning something. We're sacrificing pawns in order to fight. So here, what's the best move? It's not queen takes b3. Go for the attack. What's the biggest thing to attack? The king. Queen h5. Going for his head. To rook fd1. This next move is a novelty played by Grandmaster Posevera, who I had the opportunity to play at the Panthers event. He looked at this position and he saw that the queen and bishop are attacking this knight, and white's queen, bishop, and pawn are defending. So, he said, all right, well, I'm going to disconnect everything with d3, exclaim. Now the queen isn't defending anymore, and if the pawn moves, he'll be able to win the knight. So the best move for white in this situation is to sacrifice the rook, and you win the exchange. Now, continuing active play, attacking a piece. He grabs a pawn, but we mess up his structure. Protect our knight. Get our pieces on good squares. Attacking as many weaknesses as you can. Oh, Saxon stuff. See that instant replay. Saxon stuff. Don't trade. Don't trade unless you're winning something. And once we get to this position, the pawns are slowing down. The rooks can come over. Bad things are going to happen to them. So again, that covers the absolute main line. So coming back to move 6, g3, the absolute main line is knight, c knight f6. The other line, and this line I like to refer to as the Tate variation, after the late international master Emery Tate, he played this against me and it really made an impression. Even though it has a name, I mean, uh, I'm calling it the Tate Variation to honor the swashbuckling tactician. The move is c4. And this prevents any change in the pawn structure, really. The long-term plan with c4 is more of a positional plan than in the first that's more aggressive. You have the opportunity to slowly expand trying to use your majority of three pawns versus two. And in end games, that means we'll be able to create a pass pawn on the c file. So, after bishop g2, that's the main line. Let's first look at, say, bishop g5. We play f6, which is an awkward move. And then bishop b4. And we get our structure, queen a5 pressuring the knight. And after a3, takes, takes, queen a6. It's all about securing our pass pawn for later. That's the first variation. So after c4, the second is e4. Take. Tag. That's pretty nuts. Pretty straightforward, right? Now let's go back to move 7. So we have bishop g2. Bishop b4, again. At g7. He plays e4, which is the main line and the only try for an advantage. Castles. F6. Usually, this type of move is bad as it creates light square weaknesses around the king, but this is the only move. After takes, takes. Knight e5. He's got a lot of tactics, but no worries. Just queen b5. Securing. It's always about protecting our investment with c4. If we use the time to put him there, we got to hold on to him. He trades everything down, but we get to this equal endgame after bishop d5. Rookie 7, don't let him double on the 7th and mess up your king. Prevent his rook from doing that. He can't double if he's only got one rook. Takes. 
and after queen e2, the two grandmasters agree to a draw in a position that's well worth playing on forever, because as long as you can defend g7 and you're not getting mated, you have the opportunity and clear plan of pushing this a pawn up. As soon as this pawn moves, we have a passed c-pawn that we can push to try to win with. I felt like this should be pressed. Okay, so that is the main lines. So now we're gradually going to touch on some of the side lines that we have here. So, d4, e6, another move order. Knight f3, c5. We get to our position. Now, this is the most important point to remember. Lots and lots of tension. How you resolve the tension can either win or lose the game. The main line is 6A3, which we'll come back to. First, let's look at if he takes here. We take back. And after bishop e2, we just put our pieces on decent squares. No big mystery with how to play this type of position. We get all of our pieces developed. He forces the situation by playing there. And if he was to play d takes c5, we just take back with the bishop, no issues. This move a3 is very, very tricky. He's trying to subtly trick you into wasting a lot of time. Now, a huge mistake here is to play bishop e7. Because I'm going to be able to play d takes c5. You've already moved the bishop once. Now you're going to be wasting a tempo when you capture this pawn. And the point of a3 is now revealed. He plays b4. And you move your bishop for the third time in three moves. This has completely trashed white's or trash black's position rather and three moves you've wasted in a row. So, after a3, what you definitely need to remember is this move c takes d4. Now, there is no capture to make you waste time and we just put the bishop on e7 next move. So after bishop d3, we take and keep in mind if he doesn't play bishop d3, they're doing the c5 idea. We just play knight e4. We make sure that they're not getting as much space. We play against d4. And we have a good game. We're just going to make sure that this pawn doesn't queen. So going back to bishop d3, we take. We got to get this guy developed. So the first thing is a6, and after bishop a2, b5, because we were trying to gain a tempo off the bishop, which he moved away. a6 is that strong move. If d5, things just trade down, but we have no worries because we're able to defend against all ideas, trade stuff off. He was able to keep the knight. Very important, creating an imbalance, trying to win. Now we've got a 2 to 1. We're going to play a5, b4, use our rooks to support the pawn, push it, make a queen. We've got our plan. All right. Next variations. Now we're going to look at when white's trying to mess you up. The ready. Knight f3, d5, g3, c5. Very, very important. That you keep in mind these structures. Now we're in a King's Indian attack. You can look back at your French notes on how to play against this. The quick answer is playing it this way. Keep in mind the pictures. Pictures are important. So after knight f3, d5, c4, think to Rosh. And how we do that is play e6. And c5, again, same structure, same first three moves, basically. For bishop g2, knight f6. Now, we're back into a position similar to the main line. If he takes on c4, you don't want to go that way. 
Don't mess around with this stuff. Just play normal chess. Bishop e7. Takes. Castles. The bishop been kicked all around the board. But in this particular variation, it shows the resilience of the Tarash. As you've wasted numerous tempi. But this is just a solid position that we can play and play and play and play and play. Okay. Next up, we have the final variations. And this is with an early takes bishop f4 or bishop g5. So first we'll start with bishop f4. We just put our pieces on good squares. That's it, man. Put your pieces on good squares. Next, we have takes. Anytime they take, what do we do? What do we do? D4. And after knight a4, we have this cool move. Bishop takes c5. And the idea is queen a5 check afterwards. And we're going to put our pieces on good squares. Done. Easy, man. Easy. So then we got the main line. Bishop g5. Just block. And it looks like he's winning a pawn. What do we do when they take on c5? D4! You see it in every variation if you forgot it. Oh, you make me sick! But okay, going back. After knight g7, e3, c4, and we have the beginning of the plan of pushing it all the way. Let's go ahead and f finish this game. Keep in mind that if you're studying the Tarash, Number one guy in the world to study the Tarashian is Verusian Akobian. A-K-O-B-I-A-N. This is a game between Wang Yu and Verusian Akobian from 2008. A4, A6. Puts his pieces on good squares. Now he's got an open file to work with long term. We want to kill that guy to get our pass pawn. Remember, in end games, we want the pass pawn to try to win. We're going to trade down, try to win. So we're just loading up. Loads up on the B-pawn. And gradually, he does work. This is called Alakine's Gun. When all three of the major pieces, the two rooks and the queen, we got a queen sandwich. When that happens, that's the gun, baby. After H6... There's gradually a lot of maneuvering, and finally he wins this pawn. And he converts this game because he eventually trades down some more and then uses the protected pass pawn to get the W. This was a lengthy video on the Tarash. Covered a lot of ideas. May need to go through it a few times. Go ahead. Break it down as much as you possibly can. In all these positions, invite everybody to the party. Get all your pieces out and working. Try to do memory markers. Take pictures of the key ideas.